we're talking to uh, Ms. Uh, Hester and uh, Mr. Moss, and the issue is room in the inn. But of course, ladies, as uh, our audience probably know now, that uh, some of the things that we've been talking about are far beyond uh, the uh, room in the inn. Uh, let's, uh, Ms. Hester, give you an opportunity to uh, give our audience some information as to how they might be able to assist you and uh, Mr. Moss in terms of uh, financial assistance or whatever kind of assistance that they might be able to render to you? Um, well, we always need, of course, financial assistance like everyone does and in-kind goods. Um, things like toiletry items, the little hotel soaps, mm -hmm. um, socks and underwear and clothing. But I think what's the most precious thing people can give is their time. Mm -hmm. And it are, if we can build relationships with people, then those become the invitations for one to do mm -hmm. something more with their life. And so we need volunteers in the congregations. They need more volunteers. We need more congregations to participate. Mm -hmm. And we also need volunteers to come down to the campus, mm -hmm. especially to um, join our educational program. Mm -hmm. Everything from an art class to an AA meeting mm -hmm. to how to read a blueprint so they're not a general laborer when they go to a job. Mm -hmm. I think everyone, there's a niche for everyone. Very good. And of course, uh, Mr. Moss, let's talk about uh, the campus and some of the uh, successes that you've had uh, at, the, at the campus? Well, we, don't, we may not always measure success mm -hmm. like other people mm -hmm. do because we think that intoxicated person that is brought to the guest house, mm -hmm. if he stays and, and gets nourishing food and interaction with other people and is given a little bit of hope, mm -hmm. and if he even goes back out the next day, and the next time he comes, maybe he'll stay another day, but every time he comes in, he gets more nourishment and we see a lot of success with people that have been out there literally for years. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they are gonna stay and they mm -hmm. want treatment mm -hmm. and they go on. And actually most of the guest house staff right now is, uh, the staff is that's employed mm -hmm. came from the programs themselves. Mm -hmm. They're guys that came from the streets and, and are now over, they're the ones that do the shift coordinating. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that invite the other guests to be a part mm -hmm. of the program and to rebuild their lives. And mm -hmm. that statement alone, mm -hmm. coming from someone that's been there, is mm -hmm. tremendously powerful. Mm -hmm. But our other staff, we actually have people with master's level mm -hmm. degrees, and we have people all the way down to the shift coordinator that never had anything but maybe a grocery store clerk. Mm -hmm. But uh, And that's not to say that the other shift coordinators don't have degrees. We also mm -hmm. have a some that have mm -hmm. of those that have master's level our staff is when you come to the campus and if you become staff you won't last long if you mm -hmm. don't fit mm -hmm. it because it is a very stressful job you do mm -hmm. get very close to people and they die mm -hmm. or they'll come to you that they've got a member of their family that's died but maybe their family doesn't want them back home mm -hmm. but uh, so you become you really literally become the family mm -hmm. But uh, we have a lot of people that go on to complete their GED from the case management program for the alcohol and drug treatment programs. Mm -hmm. We have people that get into their own apartments, get back into successful mm -hmm. jobs and continue on with their life. And our congregations don't hear a lot of that because if you get different people every night, mm -hmm. if they take them just one night a week and they may see different people every mm -hmm. time they take them, they don't hear a lot of the success mm -hmm. unless we get it out there. And I do think the campus itself needs to do a better PR of mm -hmm. telling the successful mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. and making it out there. But uh, I think uh, I got very close to several of the people over the years that I met from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing a lot of them that were first diagnosed with HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. that uh, we've buried a lot of those in the last couple mm -hmm. of years that when 18 years ago when they came and they just found out they had it, they didn't know what they really had or anything, mm -hmm. but now we're seeing a lot of them die. And, 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 and so what, what we're saying here is that uh, uh, you are aware uh, on the campus of uh, this as, as a real problem, AIDS, and, and, and that some of the individuals that you're dealing with uh, on the campus actually have this disease. So what uh, I think so, and I think any time you work with any population, I know some people get afraid of TB. They mm -hmm. think all of the homeless have TB and everything. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, I think you're going to come up with somebody that can expose you to TB in your own congregation faster than you will the homeless. Mm -hmm. Rooming in requires that they have TB testing mm -hmm. and everything before they come through the program. So they're actually healthy in that respect. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, if you've been on the streets very long and you haven't had good nutrition and everything, mm -hmm. and if you are an alcohol or drug user or an IV drug user, mm -hmm. 
you're going to be exposed to everything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're not careful like they should be. Yeah. So we do know that all of that is there. Mm -hmm. But I have never, I've been exposed to TB a couple of times and mm -hmm. I've never gotten it. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes you just go on and do what you got to do mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it works out. It's mm -hmm. uh, the people that come, I, I just don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. It's not like going to work. Mm -hmm. I hate meetings. Mm -hmm. That's the part of my job I really hate. Away from the people. I, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that connection. Mm -hmm. I like uh, I like being able to sit down and talk to them mm -hmm. and hear their stories and where they've come from and what mm -hmm. they've done. Mm -hmm. And I got extremely close to one of the women that had been on the street. Mm -hmm. I had known her since she hit the streets. Mm -hmm long about the time she was 16 or 18 mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. off and on you know she'd run away or whatever and she died about a year ago mm -hmm. and I did get very close to her and she was uh, it really tore me up and I knew her story too and mm -hmm. I knew that she had had problems with her family and everything mm -hmm. and it was very hard watching her die and so you so, so uh, in that occupation you have an opportunity to meet people over the years that you've seen them right. uh, when they mm -hmm. first came into right. the program and mm -hmm. now you've watched them and so you've also watched some people who've been able to uh, change their lives in Absolutely. a positive fashion as well Absolutely. as uh, people who... I think it's the ones that stick out in your mind often are the ones that grabbed hold and you couldn't let mm -hmm. go. But uh, I will share a personal story. Mm -hmm. I hope my brother doesn't mind. He mm -hmm. actually came through the guest house. He mm -hmm. was homeless. He was a bad alcoholic. Mm -hmm. and. Family couldn't deal with him anymore. Family often can't deal with alcohol and drug issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he came to the guest house. He stayed six months, he got sober, he celebrated his fifth birthday. Mm -hmm. I, we never know who's going to walk through our mm -hmm. doors. Mm -hmm. You never know. Mm -hmm. My mother used to say she had an uncle that one day left the breakfast table and they never saw him again. Mm -hmm. They don't know why. why? They mm -hmm. never knew. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. And that, whether it's mental illness or mm -hmm. what. But you know, a lot of people think that the same people are homeless. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Our statistics prove that every year, 56% of our population moves on, mm -hmm. that they are transient, mm -hmm. that it's only that 40 something that remain. Mm -hmm. And most of it is families can put up with you so long, but they can't put up with you forever. Mm -hmm. And so so if they, they, they sort of move on through mm -hmm. and catch a train and, and right. end up somewhere else. Or they might move on to a job into their own apartment. Mm -hmm. And don't let us know that. Yeah, a mm -hmm. lot of people don't look back. You mm -hmm. know, it's not something they want to be reminded of. They don't mm -hmm. want to wear a badge that I was homeless, I mm -hmm. am homeless. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately we don't see every success story, but we do know that um, we have to judge success one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And we do get lots of letters. Mm -hmm. Now, now, what if a congregation is not involved in the uh, Room in the Inn program and you would like to uh, encourage that congregation to do so? What could you say to them this morning? Well, what we'll, would they have to do? What would they have to do? Um, I w to? They could call me at 251 mm -hmm. 7019. They could ask for anyone in the Room in the Inn mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. program. And a congregational coordinator said it once best when he said, when you ask another congregation to do room in the end, mm -hmm. you're not sharing the burden, you're sharing the blessing. Mm -hmm. It's really letting people put their faith into action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you would encourage those congregations that might not be involved in a room in the end. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Look into it. Mm -hmm. Half of our population pretty much breaks down into white and African American. Mm -hmm. And we would truly love to see more African American congregations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. participating. We want that role model, especially for some mm -hmm. of the younger mm -hmm. African American men. We have a lot of, uh, it's like I said, it's pretty much split right down the middle. I think mm -hmm. it, last year it was 47% of um, African, African American, American mm -hmm. and then the 44% were mm -hmm. white. So mm -hmm. it's a real even split, and I would like to see that. More right. African -American they need more. I really would. They think the, mm -hmm. You've lost a whole generation of mm -hmm. people to drugs, and mm -hmm. I, some of these younger people that are on the street. They need that role model so bad, mm -hmm. and they need to be proud right. of who they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that would help so mm -hmm. much. We have we have a, several African American churches that participate and literally go out of their way. Mm -hmm. They are so good, and we'd mm -hmm. like to see more. Of more, that. more we African really American, and more minority uh, participation as yes. well. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. in, in whatever you're doing there. Yes. yes. And and those uh, who might not. Uh, uh, wish to become a part of it, uh, that they can uh, provide some kind of financial resources in order they to can. help. They can, and we'd love to have them come to the campus, like mm -hmm. Rachel said. We can always use volunteers. Mm -hmm. If you want to do nothing but come in and talk to someone and decide, hey, are they really out here because they want to be, or is there a real problem? Because mm -hmm. some people think people are there. We've got 30 seconds, okay. uh, Mr. Moss, and over the last few seconds, say something about uh, Father Strobel. 
uh, the, uh, <laughs> about him in, in this program? Well, Father Strobel is the dreamer. He's the one that has truly brought it all together. He is still very much of a leader. Mm -hmm. He's the example to the whole, uh, to all of the congregations. Mm -hmm. He has a charisma about him. He has a deep love for the homeless mm -hmm. that I think most people will never understand. Very good. And, and, and let me thank the two of you. Uh, thank you. I'm a sister, oh, thank Mr. Moss, you. for coming by and giving us some excellent information. Mm -hmm. And let me encourage our, our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.